has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible, hanging out. The bad seed, the broken eater, bad apple with a bad attitude, hanging around a bunch of bad, under bad tape, bad life, bad dude, bad breath, bad attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Varela Palacio, right across the river through the woods from where Granny loves it when it's sunny outside because she likes to spark up a beefy stick of the lemon cheese hybrid in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh, people dressed in plastic bags, directing traffic, some kind of fashion, shake it up, you do it. All my friends come around, but I flat a party up. Rats on the west side, the buzz uptown. What a mess, it's tossed a tad in my brain, splattered all over Manhattan, you do be shake it up. It's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's getting in? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Cover High this afternoon. Mafia is running it with Hayden Fry at LTN of Kansas City Mo, a birthday Roll call on a Where Do You Hurt Wednesday. Demarcus Robinson, 28. Devin Williams, 28. Jordan Phillips, 30. Doug Baldwin, 34. Jimmy Clausen, 35. Antonio Bastardo, 37. Dwayne Bowe, 38. Greg Jennings, 39. Mike Anderson, 49. Kevin Carter, 49. John Kitten of the Big 5 0 going to the back nine with Scott Spezio. DJ Dozier, 57, like Pharrell. Cecil Fielder, 59. Grant Fuhr, legend, 60. Rick Mahorn, 64. My man. Sidney Moncrief, 65. Bruce Arena, 71. Artist Gilmore, Hall of Famer, legend with the fresh fro, 73 today. Jesus. Richard Childress, 77. And your boy, Doug Moe, 84. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> we got afternoon day ball. I got to tell you, Carver High, I am absolutely bent. Uh, the Braves are like 14 and 2 against the Nats, like this year, but they can't beat them by two runs, and they're losing 3 2 right now. And I'm going to have a stroke. Feeling the shoulder just numbing. The shoulder's coming on, Carver High. I went back to the well with the Braves on the run and a half, and they're wussing out again at home, no less. The Yankees beat the Bucks last night, 9-8. That was another one I laid a run and a half. Are you kidding me? You can't beat the Pirates by two? How about five runs they beat them by? They beat them 9-8 with a grand slam, Stanton style. Judge hit number 60. The Yankees 15th walk-up win this season, most in baseball. Stanton ties A-Rod, Vern Stevens, Cy Williams with the most walk-off Grand Slams in MLB history with three. Judge talking about 60, and he now leads the Triple Crown as well. He's the MVP. Only Bonds in 01, McGuire in 98 have hit more home runs in their team's first 147 games than Judge. Harrison Bader, a nice debut last night for the Bombers in center field, two for four with RBIs to boot. Aaron Boone says Garrett Cole will be the game one starter in the playoffs, so they'll be all in one. Travis Darno with a two-run shot as the Braves beat the Nats last night, 3-2. They were up 3-1 in the ninth and gave up the run. The bases were loaded. They could have lost. They didn't cover the one and a half. Brian Snitker talking about it. Mets beat the Brewers 7-5. Cover! Francisco Lindor with a G spot. Scoop Mish will join us. Craig Mish from Fantasy Sports Today and NewsWire. Uh, always a guest on C2C every week. He's back again. Mike DeCourcy as well. And he's talking about one and dones today on C to C. Guardians beat the White Sox 10, 7, and 11 innings last night. Cover. Steven Kwan with a two run single made the difference. D backs and Dodgers split two. We've got everything. Padres over the Cardinals 5 0. Cover. Cronenworth with a two run single. Red Sox beat the Reds 5 3. Cover. Cubs over the Marlins 2 to 1. Astros beat the Rays 5 0. We got it all. Jeremy Pena, three run homer. We welcome our. Radio affiliates, Sirius XM Channel 159, Sports Map Radio, Sports Byline USA, Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego. Near to you, wanna, do you wanna? The Tigers beat the Orioles. They're 5 0 against them this year. Angels beat the Rangers 5 2. Suzuki going to retire after a 16 year career. Royals beat the Twins in late innings. 
Five four Giants over the Rockies six three. Buster Posey gonna own a piece of the Giants now. A's beat the Mariners four to one. They beat Castillo last night. To red. We got strikeouts, home runs, tonight's games, making some money, lion share, odds to win the Super Bowl. NFL MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, Coach of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, Offensive Rookie, Defensive Rookie, Odds win the East, West, Southwest. You get it in both conferences all today, plus Zach Krantz from QAM Miami to break down the Bills-Dolphins game and how the uh, Dolphins have looked so far, which is fabulous. How about that job they did on the Ravens in Baltimore on Sunday? We got today in Carver High history. That'll be fun, as always. Carver High counting the days till this vacation in Florida at Disney World. Absolutely, unequivocally counting the hours, let alone days. Dubs even a preview of the President's Cup today. Mitch Trubisky wants to let it fly. Piggins said he was open 90% of his roots. Stefanski takes blame for the Browns' end of game mess against the Jets. We got Brissett on the show, Sean McDermott on the show, Jerry Jones on the show, Mike Vrabel as well, Justin Fields. I mean, you name it, we got it all. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, Darius Slay, Graham Gano, the NFC Players of the Week, AFC Tua, Jalen Watson of the Chiefs, and Braden Mann, the Jets punter on the AFC side. Uh, we'll talk about college football. Mike Gundy doesn't want to talk about Bedlam anymore. Your boy Gundy of Oklahoma State. We'll talk about all the games Saturday. We got NBA news. Suns owner wants to sell both teams. Grab a freshie midweek. It's coast to coast. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell Coast to Coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the pass. Game penalty. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live. Win. Prime oh, yeah, time. In game live. Overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. prove how much better they are than Texas, this actually matters. Winning this game 65-0 matters. Because, see, they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52-10. to Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing, on average, eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kev, and we talked about that total mm -hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on SportsGrid. The morning after. What do the Tennessee Titans need to change on the ground to get Derrick Henry back to what we expect for the King? The Tennessee Titans are a run first team. That is their identity, right? You run the ball to set up the pass. That is where they start their entire offense and they go from there. So obviously when the run game isn't working, the whole offense is starting to struggle and stall, especially when you don't have a top wide receiver. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. This is going to be a phenomenal season for these two teams because right now they look like they can't be stopped on offense on both sides. So for looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now, conference winners, the AFC, the favorite of the clubhouse, the Buffalo Bills at a plus 240 price, followed by the Kansas City Chiefs at a plus 360, and the NFC Championship winner currently, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at a plus 310. But how about this? The Philadelphia Eagles pulling into a tie with the Green Bay Packers at a 5-1 to one price. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Carver High, if I had a gun to my head, I'd still take the Ravens over the Patriots on the money line and laying three, even in Foxborough. But it won't be easy because they play a unique brand of football when they play at Gillette. The Ravens need to do the same thing they did against the Dolphins this week because the Patriots don't have the kind of offense 
that can come back from 20 plus points down. The Sports Grid Network. Want the thrill of a parlay bet packed into one single game? Then you're going to love one game parlay from BetMGM. Couldn't be easier. Just pick your game, select your bets, then combine them into a single parlay. One game, bigger payouts. Now you're betting with the king of sports books. Sign up today and your first bet is risk-free up to $1,000 when you use bonus code One Game. Win big with One Game Parlay from BetMGM. So, Carver High, I went to the uh, pool today to swim laps, and they had had a, a heater break. So the heat pump broke, and so you couldn't swim for like two weeks because the water was ice cold. So I finally got a message that the pool was back in business. So I, I went to swim laps today, and when I got out, the lifeguard said, how does it feel? I said, it feels great, but not as good as a risk-free bet up to $1,000 on the BetMGM app if you use the bonus code Coast to Coast. He immediately signed up for BetMGM, and uh, he's making a $1,000 risk-free bet, he said, on Thursday night's Brown Steeler game. I said, good luck, kid. And then I went about my business. But it's everywhere I go that people are being turned on to the BetMGM app. That's really what it's all about, uh, just continuing to get people to get on there, use the coast-to-coast promo code, uh, and they're in business. Uh, Like you say, the next week of pain day is just around the corner. Uh, you right. want to be involved uh, when it all happens, that's for sure. Uh, we will start with baseball today, Scotty. We have a couple of afternoon games, Braves and the Mets both in action. Significant, of course, for both of them. Braves down 3-2 in the eighth at home to the Nationals, as you mentioned before. Mets and the Brewers scoreless in the fourth inning. So we will keep our eye on both of those things as we progress here on Coast to Coast. We'll also let you know what happened in those games last night. But we have to start with Aaron Judge, Scotty, and the Yankees. Uh, Back to the stadium last night. Judge leading off the ninth inning. Yanks were down 8-4 to in this game, Scotty, going to the ninth after the Castro three-run homer in the eighth. But the fans, most of them, stuck around because they knew that 99 was leading off the ninth, uh, and he started a big rally for the Yankees, number 60 on the Yes Network. Side for Judge, and here's the 3 1. Drove deep to left field. There it goes. Number 60. Slide over, babe. You've got some company. Aaron James Judge has tied George Herman Babe Ruth with 60 home runs. I mean, it really is impressive and it, just another massive shot. And that was just the beginning of what got real crazy in the boogie down. Uh, it certainly did. So after the judge Homer, Scotty, and we'll give you all the post with him in a moment. Eight five now. Rizzo gets on. Torres gets on. Peraza gets on. Giancarlo Stanton, who has been absolutely struggling for the last few weeks since he came off that injured list, Scotty. Well, he sent the fans home happy also on the Yes Network. Judge has hit his 60th home run. Now the Yankees are trying to win the game. That one's drilled to left field. Is it high enough? See ya! A walk-off grand slam, and the Yankees win! Judge hits 60, and the Yankees win in walk-off fashion. I mean, it was insanity last night in the Bronx after that. I mean, they were going Calypso Bay at Yankee Stadium. That's a crazy comeback win. You know, the problem with it is for me, now I appreciate it. It's awesome. It was great. They need to do that. Uh, You know, all these 15 walk-off wins, they need to do it in the postseason. They need to do it in October. I mean, these late September games, I mean, they're going to win the East. They're going to the playoffs. They're getting a bye. All this stuff doesn't matter. They need to do that when it really matters, you know? Down in a game in the playoffs in a series that's tied one all or two all and you step up and hit a grand slam to win the game. That's what they need. All this stuff now is just uh, appetizers. 
Yeah. Uh, we've said this since April. Uh, they've had, they were as high as high you can get in June, as low as you could possibly get in August. It's been a roller coaster like the six month regular season is. None of it matters uh, until they show what they can do in October because that's what the Yankees are judged on. They're not judged on these April through September games. That's what matters. 15 walk off wins most in baseball this year. That was kind of a record tying homer for Stanton as well, Scotty. A Rod, Vern Stevens, and Cy Williams, most walk off grand slams in Major League Baseball history. That was his third. But Judge is the man of the hour. As we know, 60 ties the babe, 147 games to do it. Hasn't been real emotional a lot during this run with the homers. Been very businesslike. Went back to businesslike, but you could tell, Scotty, uh, it hit him hard last night. Here's Judge. You always say you don't pay attention to the numbers, but 60 is pretty hard to, to ignore. Just what does that number mean to you? It's tough to say because you don't, like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't think about it. I don't think about the numbers, and you know, when you talk about Ruth and Maris and Mantle and all these, you know, Yankees greats that, you know, there's so many great things in this game. You know, you know, you never imagine as a kid, you know, getting mentioned with them, but you know, it's 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 an incredible honor, you know, and um, you know, something I don't take lightly, light lightly at all. Um, but. You know, we're not done. We still got a couple games left in this in this season, and you know, hopefully, a couple more wins come with them. Yeah, I don't believe him. Uh, no one uh, lives in New York City <laughs> that is on the uh, you know back pages of the tabloids every day uh, for months, and everyone knows what he was after, and he knows what he's after, and he tied Babe Ruth, and he says he doesn't think about it. I don't believe that for one minute. And now you're going to tell me he doesn't think about Maris in 61. I don't believe that. And then to say he doesn't want to break it, I don't believe that. I do believe him when he says they got work to do because they do. Uh, frankly, the team is really all about him. The rest of the team is fairly hack city. They don't do anything. It's all about him and Stanton when he's healthy. The rest of them, frankly, uh, you know, the only guys that really step up on that team, you know it as well as I do, is Rizzo and, you know, somewhat the pitching staff and bullpen. I mean, they didn't get to where they are because Holmes was terrible. He was great for the first half. And they've had solid pitching for the most part. But you know as well as I do, the rest of them haven't done anything. Labor Torres has had about two good games the whole season. They got a lot of guys that do nothing. And I really don't give them a chance, to be honest with you, in the postseason. I just don't think they're that good. He also has an opportunity now, Scotty, to win the Triple Crown. He now leads an average, along with homers and RBIs. 316 is the best in the American League. Of course, the last Yankee Triple Crown winner, Mantle, in 56. Uh, Miggy Cabrera won it in 2012 for the Tigers. Uh, what a year. And he's got he's got two more weeks to add on to it. Uh, pretty amazing, pretty special. Um, and hopefully they can he can cap it off with a big October as well, Scotty. Well, you know, we talked to Bob Nightingale yesterday. He thinks he'll make $300 million, And I just, I don't believe that. I think he's going to get way more than that. I think he said eight years, $300 million. I'm like, at, at a low, I, I, my low is three fifty. My loves with you. You don't win the triple crown and you're going out the door in New York with one foot out the door and, and you don't have Hal Steinbrenner open up and back the Brinks truck into that garage and just give him all the money. It's going to happen as sure as I'm sitting here because all they ever do is spend way too much on baseball players. The Yankees go over the top every time when it you know, at the end of the day, when it matters, they're going over the top, over the rainbow, over the mountain, to the other side. They're going to go up to the chalet and drink a Vouv Clicquot. Believe me, you, he's not leaving New York.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football well, today. It's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. Survivor pools for the most part because. Pro football I don't today. It most important player despite not being quarter focused of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense half in game in this game. Game I said it'll be a pure track me shootout half in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime in nine K's and I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? I in when they were football you know, full circle. Plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line. Get the movement. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. I'm slightly conflicted. is because I feel like I love so much on the board. But do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet? Or my best bet. We'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a PI down the field. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow, and we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. <laughs> watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, the Bundesliga and the NFL have announced a powerful arrangement that begins as early as this November in Munich, where Tampa Bay is playing Seattle at Allianz Arena, and they motivate a deal with the largest sporting entity in Germany, going back and forth every year, Munich one year, Frankfurt the next, and the Bundesliga will provide back-of-the-house support and marketing help for the NFL. The NFL will bring its magic over to Germany and be able to support it as well. Remember the WFL, World League of American Football, and otherwise, their most exciting franchises were Frankfurt, Berlin, the Rhine Fire. It was expats. Now it's much larger a relationship, and this deal will no doubt take it to another level. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. You see Scoop Mish on uh, Coast to Coast every week. Craig Mish from Fantasy Sports Today and Newswire joins us now on C2C. Craig, I got a problem with um, the Braves uh, up 2-1. They give up the home run. They're down 3-2. They had runners on first and second with one out in the bottom of the eighth. They, I think there was a catch and a throw out, and, and now they're in the bottom of the ninth, and they're effing around with the Nationals. And, as you, you can tell, I laid a run and a half for the second straight day. Last night, 3-1 in the ninth. They give up a run. I don't understand how you beat a team 14 times, the worst team in baseball, and you can't beat them, let alone by more than a run. I mean, that is unbelievable to me today that they're going to lose to the Nationals. I want to puke. Listen, it's September baseball, Scott. I mean, there's zero pressure on Washington right now. They were playing their worst baseball when it meant something, and now that it doesn't mean anything, they're playing a little bit better. So uh, I don't know. I never advise getting heavy on April or September baseball, and I know that's all we got going on right now. But uh, unfortunately, Scott wasn't able to watch the game today because I was uh, doing my, my other show. So uh, I feel for you, but I wasn't in tune on that one. I mean, you're playing at home in Atlanta in the daytime, the businessman special, and you can't beat the Nationals. I mean, honest to Christ, a, a Little League team could beat them. I yeah, mean, honestly. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not positive about this, but I think the pitcher for the Washington Nationals 
is going to break the record today for the most starts ever in baseball history without recording a win or tying it. Something like that today. Espino, I'm pretty sure. The most yeah. starts ever without recording a win. I didn't get one today either. No. <laughs> I mean, it is just unbelievable to me. And then last night, I'm watching this Yankee game, and they're effing around with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah. And Brian Reynolds has four hits, and I and Garcia was pitching so well. And I'm like, I thought I was watching the 1960 World Series. I mean, Ooh. remember the the Yankees outscored them by like 40 runs, and the Pirates mm -hmm. still won the series in the uh, seventh game on the Mazeroski homer in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah. How in God's name have the Pirates come to? New York and effed around with the Yankees. Now, I know they won that game last night, but by the grace of God, they won that game last night. They had no business winning that game. Yeah, it's very dangerous this time of the year because, again, you have so many teams and pitchers and playing, and they have no pressure whatsoever. It's just there's a reason why these teams struggle so much in May and June. It's because the pressure builds up, and then they fall out of it, and then it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I know that you're a Pittsburgh guy. Boy, I would love to get that guy Reynolds here in South Florida. I got to be honest with you, Scott. I think he's uh, I think he's a player. I don't know if you guys are going to pay him. So I'd like to see him out of there. Well, of course they're not going to pay him. They don't pay anybody. Every good player that goes through Pittsburgh leaves and wins rings. Uh, I mean, they paid Polanco and Marte, right? They gave him, They both they gave those guys contracts. They didn't and where out. are they now? Yeah, Marte is chasing a ring with New York. Polanco, I don't know where he is. He's done, I think. That was a bad that was a bad signing. I mean, it is it really is unbelievable. Do you think the Mets uh they're scoreless in like the fourth in Milwaukee? Are they gonna sweep that set? Are the Brewers gonna let them come in there and push them around for three days and lose more ground in the wild card? They really need to win this game today against Walker. That's all there is to it. Yeah, and, and with the Phillies losing five games in a row, uh, you know, Milwaukee had that opportunity to sort of jump right into that final wild card. They didn't take advantage of that. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, Scott, like pressure, I know you had Bob on yesterday, but pressure around the game in the front offices of Major League Baseball teams is really getting intense. I mean, you saw Detroit fire Al Avila and they replaced him with Scott Harris. I, I mean, today Dayton Moore got fired by the Kansas City Royals. I mean, I understand they hadn't won in a long time, and, and the fans are sick of it there. But I mean, he got. To, I mean, how many I mean, did Dayton Moore get to more World Series than Brian Cashman in the last decade? I think that answer is yes. I mean, the, the pressure is just mounting. And and the other thing that I got to ask, I, I mean, I guess I mean, is, is Milwaukee under some pressure at this point if they don't make the postseason? I don't. Know, this is crazy stuff happening. I mean, it's like uh, now I bet on the Mets on. Uh, the last two nights to win. And I'm, you know, I took them again today, but I thought that a good buy was getting that run and a half with the Brewers because they're so desperate to win. They have to win. They cannot get swept. In my view, they're going to find themselves out of it. It's going to be over before you can spit. And it is amazing to me that in their own building, I mean, they give up the grand slam last night to Lindor. Mm -hmm. They were winning that game. They just can't do anything right. They're losing these games. They got their ass beat. Scherzer, I thought, was the greatest bet ever at even money on, on Monday night. And then everybody's yelling at me today that Walker's unbeatable. What do you think of his stuff? Yeah, no, I think he's really good. And I think that he'll be their third or fourth starter in the, in the postseason. He's had a really good year. Uh, you know, a little bit uneven, some ups, some downs. I know he's been on the injured list as well, but look, the Mets you know, obviously are going to roll into the postseason in a five-game series with those two guys, then they'll figure it out. In a seven-game series, Walker's definitely going to be part of it. So, uh, you look, I, 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 he, he probably is not the same guy that he was five years ago, but he's definitely still, you know, formidable in a seven-game series. They can choose between him or Carrasco or Bassett. And then if, uh, I don't know what McGill's status is, but, you know, inevitably they'll have him too at some point. So uh, McCullers against Kluber tonight at the Trop. The Astros going for the sweep of the Rays. They went into St. Pete and pushed around the Rays like they didn't even exist. Yeah, you, you, you always fade the team coming off a clinch. 
This is a rule. I mean, that's, you know, the teams push so hard to get to that point. They pop the champagne and then the lineups come out the next day, Scott, and they're a shell of what they were the day before. So without even, I mean, I haven't seen the lineup, but without even looking at the lineup, my guess is nobody on Houston plays today. Well, I mean, they keep winning. How is that possible? They were popping champagne corks on Monday and they won Tuesday and they're playing them again tonight. I, they I, are, I, it's, yeah. and the Dodgers, they've already clinched and they keep winning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, they're the best teams in baseball. So I guess it, I guess it shouldn't come as that much of a surprise, but look, naturally, I, I think that matchup is the, is the matchup that we're probably headed for in the world series. I think so, at least between Houston and Los Angeles. And uh, look, to, look to me, I, I still think Houston's got a great shot to win this thing. Uh, I love what they've done top to bottom and, I mean, what what is there left to say? I mean, this guy Jordan is going to hit what two dongs a day off every pitcher he sees in Major League Baseball. He's, I, I know Judge and Otani are getting all the attention in the American League, but uh, Alvarez got to be third in the MVP. Well, what did you think when you saw the Jays last night put eighteen on the Phillies? Phillies are such a hard team to read. They they had they looked so good for a while, Scott, and I was like, here they are. This is finally the team that I thought that they would be. But naturally, I, I suppose when you lose, Nola's a great pitcher, but I, you know, I kind of think Wheeler is sort of the anchor of the rotation. And once you lose that guy every fifth day that can stop the bleeding, that seems to be the problem. They lost five games in a row, and they're sort of limping toward the finish here. And as you know, the teams that get hot at the end of the season are usually the teams that win the World Series. So I, I'm still a believer in the Phillies. I don't know why, but I, I do think they'll turn it around. The dynamic that I thought that we were going to see this year, Scott, was going to be I'd be talking to you on September the 21st and we'd have these unbelievable races to the finish for the wild card, but everything's pretty much been determined. So maybe there's a part of that going on too. Well, I mean, if the White Sox lose to the Guardians today, uh, it's season over. I mean, Lance Lynn has to win that game today. They're already five and a half back in the wild card. They're behind Baltimore by a half game, and they're five out of the Central. The Guardians are going to win the Central, and the White Sox are not getting a wild card. But today, they better win, or the Beer Cups are going to start coming on the field. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I Look, I, I think it was that nice little blip when Cairo came in and, and took over for Tony La Russa. I don't expect Tony to be back. Maybe Cairo will take over the team. They saw that little infusion, I guess, but it looks like that was short lived. That the, the White Sox, I mean, when you look at it in general, they're going to end up still winning a decent amount of games this year, but they're one of the biggest disappointments, I would say, in baseball, Scott, for sure. So when you look at the National League and what we talked about the Brewers being two and a half back, they lose today, they go three. Uh, do you see. Anything changing between Atlanta, San Diego, and Philly? Yeah, I mean, Milwaukee gets Miami for three next week, so that's sort of their shot, like, to sweep and maybe jump back into this like they can. But I I do think that postseason teams are set. Philadelphia, Milwaukee is that one where I look at it and wonder, uh, you know, if Philadelphia keeps sliding, can Milwaukee find a way in? But you talk about not taking advantage of a situation. All Milwaukee had to do was just split games back and forth the last few days. They'd be ahead of them, and they couldn't do it. Cardinals and uh, Padres going at it tonight. Good series. It started last night, and the Padres won their fifth in a row. Uh, Michaelis tonight going against Snell. A good one at Petco. Who do you like there? Probably the Cardinals, I would say. I know the Padres are playing great baseball, but Michaelis is one of the very few pitchers in Major League Baseball that's getting deep into a game. So, uh, you know, a first five, I think, is interesting for St. Louis because you know Michaelis is getting five innings in and the game's going to be close. So all you got to do is win that one by a run, if I'm not mistaken, in the first five. So St. Louis would be the one for me. I like a, I like a pitcher so, who goes deep into a game. So they uh, have rebranded your show, Newswire Live. It's getting so popular that they've changed the name and the show's been on for how many months and already it is uh, getting much juice much fanfare much press very excited for you scoop uh thanks for coming on coast to coast we'll see you again next week Craig. all right have a great one guys
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live. Man. Prime oh, time. Is the PGA champion. In yes. game live. Overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All-American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brancy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice the morning after they have a 52.2 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season, the last time Indy won on the road in Jacksonville. Pretty much my point being, the AFC South stinks. The Jags are the only team with a win, and their updated win total is still just six and a half. It was the number before the year got underway. Let me take the over on Jacksonville. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Well, what do you know? The Bills go out there and embarrass the Titans. The number now is two and a half on Vegas. They're nearly a field goal road favorite against last year's number one seed in the AFC. And that's a Raiders team, again, that just blew a 20-0 halftime lead against the Arizona Cardinals. The Tennessee Titans right now look like they are being treated as one of the lower teams in the marketplace right now. Only on Sports Grid. All right, for all back on Coast to Coast, the legendary Mike DeCourcy joins us every week from the Sporting News to talk about various things that matter to your life. Uh, this week, clearly, one of the things that matters to my life uh, starts tomorrow, and that would be the Steelers-Browns game in Cleveland, of all dreaded places on earth. And you were writing about one Kenny Pickett this week, Mike, and Certainly the fans want Kenny Pickett uh, as their quarterback now, as in today. They're not interested in tomorrow. They want him now. Meanwhile, the brass front office and Tomlin have no such plans. Yeah, I think that the first problem is that uh, the Steelers fans, uh, it, understandably, uh, the last two times they drafted a quarterback in the first round, and started him immediately, uh, that player became a Super Bowl champion and a, and, and a Hall of Famer, uh, one not official, but the other uh, in for many years. And so I think there's an assumption that that's what happens if you do this. But uh, what they're not paying attention to, Scott, is how Ke- Mitchell Trubisky is being used at this point. Uh, they went out to Cincinnati, and I don't know what the game plan was. I don't think anybody knows outside the locker room what the game plan was when they went there. But when they landed, they were handed seven points, like on the second play. So it changed, and and then handed more opportunities, and they wound up with fourteen points quickly that were basically gifted to them. And so that changes what you want to do at that point. 
you're focused on, let's not lose this lead. That was the whole focus. So uh, they weren't really aggressive in that game. And then I think, again, second game, you're up, you're up against the most successful NFL coach in history. So, again, they weren't taking chances. And so I don't think there's enough attention being paid to that by, you know, by people in the Pittsburgh media in a lot, in, in a lot of cases, uh, by uh, the fans, obviously. And there's an assumption that they need Kenny Pickett to energize things. Uh, look, it, I don't know what's going to happen in Cleveland on Thursday night, but I know that, uh, that they, they aren't going to be able to consistently play this type of football. And I don't think that's the intention either, regardless of who's the quarterback. Look, uh, let's get real here. Uh, their offense is one of the worst in the league right now, stat-wise. Uh, the kid, Olszewski, who dropped the punt against the Patriots, I'm done with him. Like, thanks so much for everything. Goodbye. Uh, you're not doing that again in a tight game. We're not having it. Uh, you know, the old Bob Knight method, which is you screw up, you sit for upwards of a month to two. Uh, you don't play again. If you screw everything up for everyone, you're sitting. But the Steelers will probably play him still, which I think is a mistake. And their offense is so anemic, uh, they don't do anything. I mean, Harris has 70 yards in two games. Their offensive line is porous. I can't believe they won the Cincinnati game after all that chaos and missed field goals. They're lucky they got that one. You could just see they were going to lose to the Patriots all day on Sunday. I'm glad I sold my tickets. And now they're playing the Browns. And they claim, they've been saying publicly, they're going to start throwing the ball downfield more. Do you believe that? I think it. it I think that it somewhat involves circumstance and, and what they think they can exploit. But... Scott, you've watched the Steelers long enough to know. I mean, you go back to when they had Bell and Brown and Roethlisberger, and they were lighting up scoreboards, and then they'd come up against Harbaugh and the Ravens, and what would happen? They would play a completely different style of football than the one that maybe they played against the Jaguars or someone like that. So I think that that's the thing to remember is that the, he's, he's very cautious when he co coaches against someone who he has been proven – to be significant, that he has that he has great respect for, and he knows he's got to be careful. He coaches differently against them. I'm not saying that they're like uh, Air Coryell when they play uh, the Jets or whoever, but it's different when he plays against someone that's in the in, in the pantheon. So I, I think they'll go out and they'll be more aggressive, unless it so happens that Cleveland hands them three early turnovers. Then I think that would change it again. Let's talk about, uh, well, first of all, lastly, do you think they can win in Cleveland with the way they look? Uh, and I mean, the Browns choked a, a game like I have never seen in my life with a minute 50 left. They blew a 30 to 17 game and lost to the Jets. I don't know how you recover from that. Their fans looked like they just had a Pharrell anoscopy at eight in the morning. I mean, they looked like they woke up and said, I feel like I've had a can of tennis balls inside me. You did, actually. What happened uh, to the Browns? Do they recover from that and beat the Steelers or not? Well, I think the Steelers will be more aggressive defensively than they were. That's the other thing that people missed on Sunday is that they were very cautious going against, uh, with, you know, without J.J. Watt, excuse me, without T.J. Watt, they were very cautious going against the New England offense, and I think that hurt them. Uh, and they were very cautious on offense. And, you know, in the end, Gunnar Olszewski is the happiest guy in Pittsburgh because if it weren't for Mitchell Trubisky and Kenny Pickett, people would realize that he was the one that blew the game. I, I, I still think it's going to be number one, uh, the number one uh, point of emphasis for the Steelers is going to be do not turn over the football because that's where they are with this offense. Uh, they don't have uh, a proven offensive line. It's still developing. Uh, and they, they they do have some very significant weapons on the outside with Fryermuth as the tight end, uh, Harris at his best. They do have some significant weapons, but they don't yet have a quarterback who has found a groove. So uh, they'll they'll play this situationally, and I think they certainly can win. But they need to they need to again win it with their defense first. That doesn't necessarily mean producing seven turnovers, uh, but it means they have to be the aggressor and the conqueror on defense. 
I mean, honestly, they uh, the pass to Fryermuth that set up the winner in Cincinnati was a great play when he was in trouble. Uh, when he got out of the pocket, he made a great play against the Patriots. They finally got in the red zone uh, maybe once the whole day, and he threw the strike to Fryermuth for a touchdown and the two-pointer to Johnson. It's not like he can't do it. I don't know what he's so afraid of. Just get out and do it, bro. This is why people have mocked him since he was drafted number two is because he just doesn't do what he's supposed to do, what he's built to do. The guy's 27. He's big. He's strong. He can run. He can throw on the run. He's good out of the pocket. And then he turns into this immobile, uh, like cement shoes, like Roethlisberger standing in the pocket, getting hit and knocked around like a rag doll. I mean, you wonder why they're chanting Kenny and, and other obscenities. Let's talk about your great article this week, Mike, about one and done and where the NBA is headed apparently is back to a age limit of, uh, what is it going to be now, 18? Well, there's there's some pushback on the idea that that's a slam dunk, uh, Scott, and sorry for the... Uh... Sorry for the obvious reference there, but uh, Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN immediately after the Athletic reported that that was sort of on the way, uh, right. immediately responded by saying, "Nah, they're going to talk about it, but don't think that it's an automatic. And if it does happen, it could be many years in the future, because what you have to realize is that when you have an age limit of 18 rather than 19, draft picks are worth less. They're not worthless, but they're worth less." Uh, they're, they're great when you have a LeBron James, but we've only had one of him in the last 25 years. Uh, so uh, the idea that taking it back to 18 uh, is going to happen quickly, I, I, there have been too many deals, too many maneuverings made with people exchanging first round picks. And all of a sudden, the uh, Players Association and the owners are going to agree to something that devalues some of those assets exchange. I don't think that'll happen quickly. I think Adrian... You know, his logic on that, the logic he presented was really solid. Uh, and then as well, I think that it's important for the NBA to remember. And it's it's very unusual for the Players Association to have been the ones that stood in the way of making the NBA uh, realize, you know, the, the NBA hasn't realized how good the 19-year age limit has been for them. Uh, you think back to 2019, uh, the night of the draft lottery. Right. and. You had uh, the New Orleans Pelicans uh, front office is watching the draft lottery on TV. And we all saw it on Twitter that when it came up that they'd won the lottery and they knew they had Zion Williamson, they went crazy because they were getting somebody that people knew about and was going to help sell tickets and was going to hopefully, you know, if he's healthy, help win basketball games. In 2000, when I covered the NBA draft because I was working for Cincinnati Inquirer and Kenyon Martin was going to be the number one overall pick. So I'm in Minnesota and I'm walking out of the press conferences that have been had with the various guys who are going to be lottery picks, and I'm standing behind Darius Miles, and I said to myself, I remember this distinctly, Scott, I'm one of like 1,500 people in the country that's seen this guy play. How is that helping the league to bring in someone like him and, and take him third overall, and then all of a sudden he doesn't win that many games for the Blazers, and he winds up going somewhere else, uh, doesn't succeed? That's not good for the league. The players, uh, the players association is skeptical. The team executives, most of them, don't want this because they can't evaluate properly elite NBA prospects against non-elite high school competition. Against college competition, they can get an idea. They have a frame of reference with that. And so I think that there's going to be more pushback from the front offices about how bad an idea this is for basketball generally. Guys get paid now with NIL. Guys can go to the G League Ignite and get good money if that's what they want to do. Uh, so right. it's not like it was in 19, or excuse me, in 2012 or whatever. Guys can get paid now and develop as prospects before they arrive in the league. Mike, what did Silver talked about? Uh, we think, you know, in, in not so many words, I, I can't dive into it uh, that deeply, but he said in not so many words, we think we can develop them better. And I don't agree with that. No, it's it, it, it because first of all, you're talking about taking guys out of high school and putting them in the best basketball competition in the world by far. And I, my, my analogy has always been, hey, there's like really bright genius kids in science class in high school, but you don't hand them a scalpel and say, okay, take out somebody's kidney. 
Uh, you, you make you train them first. And the NBA doesn't have that apparatus. They have the G League uh, there, but even that is a little bit sketchy as a training device because most of the players there are incentivized to get out of the G League. So you bring in a good prospect and you say, hey, help him along. No, I'm not helping him. He's trying to get the job that I want. So I'm, as, you know, as the, as the fellow point guard, I'm not going to help that guy, even if he's really nice and cool. I still want the job with the big team. And I don't want to be here in Santa Barbara or, or Bakersfield or wherever. Hold on a second, Mike. Just hold on. Hey, Mavi, you remember that night you took out my appendix at CVS with that knife in the kitchen because I didn't want to go to the hospital? Yeah, it's been working pretty good ever since. You remember that? <laughs> it was crazy. Mike, sometimes you never know. The dumbest guy or the smartest guy could still pull off miracles. It's like MacGyver. Remember that guy? He had all those fancy moves with like a razor blade. He could get you out of Leavenworth with a razor blade. I mean, it's Shawshank stuff. I mean, it's crazy. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with college basketball. One other note, Mike, very important news. My son looks like he's leaning toward, oh, by the way, his name's Gunner too. Nice job, Wooski, whatever the hell your name is in Pittsburgh. Don't ever use my son's name again. The one thing I want to say is it looks like he's leaning toward going to Indiana. I said, why do you want to go to Indiana? He said, yeah, I read the other day they're going to have beer sales at the basketball game. I'm like, oh, that's a hell of a deal for you. So it looks like he's only interested in going to IU to drink beer and chase women. I don't know what that's about, Mike, but they're going to sell beer at the women's and men's games at Assembly Hall. Christ, I never thought I'd see the day. Mike, great stuff. We'll see you next week, buddy. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bama. I think Vandy can win the game, take it one and In half. game oh, live oh, prime yeah, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All-American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brent. See, I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S. Just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice the morning after they have a 52.2 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season, the last time Indy won on the road in Jacksonville. Pretty much my point being, the AFC South stinks. The Jags are the only team with a win, and their updated win total is still just six and a half. It was the number before the year got underway. Let me take the over on Jacksonville. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Well, what do you know? The Bills go out there and embarrass the Titans. The number now is two and a half on Vegas. They're nearly a field goal road favorite against last year's number one seed in the AFC. And that's a Raiders team, again, that just blew a 20-0 halftime lead against the Arizona Cardinals. 
The Tennessee Titans right now look like they are being treated as one of the lower teams in the marketplace right now. Only on Sports Grid. Well, the uh, Nationals beat the Braves today, Carver High, inexplicably, 3-2. to two. Some guy you've never heard of went 2-4 for four with a home run, and that was all she wrote. Last night, the Braves beat the Nats by the same score. Uh, correct. Last night, the Braves beat the Nats 3-2. to two. Travis Darno, Scotty, uh, provided the offense, Bally Sports South. And he does hammer one toward the gap in left center. That ball is at the track wall. Strikes first. No one cares if you won last night if you lose today. Let's just be clear well, on that's, that. Right, which is exactly why I'm skipping on Snitker, Scotty, because he was a liar, uh, to be quite frank with you. He said they weren't going to celebrate last night clinching a playoff spot, and clearly he lied because they came out today and played like they didn't care. Uh, so there you go. The Braves uh, did clinch a playoff spot with that win. So the Mets, Scotty, have an opportunity this afternoon to gain a full game on the Braves. Uh, yep. So they won last night 7-5. to five. They were losing in this game. Three-run homer from Alonzo, and then Francisco Lindor, Scotty. Clear them all on SNY. And Lindor hits one in the air to deep left field. Back goes Yelich to the warning truck. Looking up, it's out of here! Francisco Lindor with a grand slam to put the Mets in front. Oh, wow. Lindor, first pitch, clears him. 7-4 to four, New York. So uh, that was unbelievable, and I hit that bet last night. But uh, today, I'm on Walker, but I'm also on the Brewers getting that run and a half, and it's scoreless in the bottom of the six, and a good one in Milwaukee. Not anymore. Brewers just got on the board in the six. Whoa. One nothing Whoa. Milwaukee Whoa. right now. Whoa. So Mets Whoa. have a chance to extend Whoa. to two. If they lose, it will stay at one in the NL East. Woo! Woo! Give me that run and a half. Yeah. 